Hey, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is Garden Rescue. But before we take a look inside this week's garden, let me tell you a little bit more about it. This guy came to me years ago. We call him Old Navy. He grows for him and his wife. And he was awful years ago when he got started. But he's gotten so good lately that he's actually the guy that I get my weed from. So let's see what this garden looks like. I'm super excited. My first impression, the garden area is neat and clean. It's quiet, you know, it feels pretty good in here. The atmosphere feels pretty good. All right, let's take a look and see what's inside the tents. Okay, so overall I'm pretty impressed. It's not too bad. I already heard that they were gonna be kind of big, but that's funny because I always tell you guys Growers only complain about two things, right? Their girlfriends hate trimming and their plants got too big for the light. This is kind of what happens when your plants get too big for the light. This is a 600 watt light. That's why the tips aren't burning yet. But yeah, not too bad. You can see down here, there was really no need to grow all this plant, right? Like if he had started flowering earlier, um, we wouldn't have had this, we would have had more solid flowers up top. But they kept the bottom nice, stripped nice and clean. Um, here's something that's kind of interesting, look down here. This is called trenching. See how this part of the Grodan cube is sticking above the soil? This wasn't buried far enough. You can see the roots are exposed and as you water, this part here keeps keeps getting you know wore down and the roots keep getting exposed. That's called trenching. You always want to want to bury those things as deep as possible. Like over here, you can see that this one's still covered up. Um, this one back here, you can see is exposed. Oh, making a mess in this garden. But not too bad. This is week seven. He's got a Sentinel cooling thermostat. This turns the fan on and off. A timer. You can see he's got a thermostat up here. Check out the hood, it's a Magnum Triple XL. And then look how it's attached to the frame of the tent with a zip tie, right? There's no light hooks, there's no hangers, there's no ratcheting, lower, adjustable, nothing. He's just got it just tucked up against the top and the flowers are still running into the light. That's why I tell you guys, a tent is a small space to grow. And this is a 600 watt light. All right, so when I talk canopy and you hear me say you get a half pound from a 400 watt light, and a pound from a 600 watt light and a pound and a half from a thousand watt light. The canopy that I'm talking about is the space between these two trellises. From the top of the buds to the bottom of where all the leaves are, there's no canopy at the bottom. So this canopy is too close to the light, but you can see that when you look through this area here, you can see there's a lot of canopy. And this garden got out of control a little, but you can see that there's a lot of canopy. Now, on that same thought, let's, let's come over here and look at this thing. And we can see that while the plants have been stripped nicely and they're not trenching at the, you know, they're not trenching, this one has a little bit, and they're stripped, and we look at the trellis area, we can see that there's only two plants. That's not nearly enough canopy for this area. And you can see that the leaves are curled from not enough mag and too much light. But it's not so much light that, the, that it's getting the flowers. This is week seven, so the flowers still look good. It's not actually hurting the flowers. But then these ones aren't right under the middle of the light. But you can see, whew, this one's holding up one of the flowers. But you can see that this garden doesn't have enough plant in it. So this light should definitely be dimmed. Oh man. Hot All right, so something else I want you to take a look at is the trellis, right? There's two layers of trellising. You can see the plants are stripped up to the bottom of the trellis. If you look at my hand, there's no light down here, so there's no point in having any plant down here. 
Here's the first flower that starts. The trellis holds the stems. See the stem here? Then the flower head comes up through the second trellis. You can see that here is one of the top buds. It's flat on top because it's ran into the glass. You can see the sticky from the trichomes left on the glass. The only reason this bud hasn't burnt is because this is a 600 watt light in a super sized hood and it's dispersing the light and heat so much that that flower doesn't burn. But zoom in with me here one more time and you can see that flower has. You can see that flower has. So that's, that's too close, too in the center. All right, let's take a look at one of these buds. Let me get this one out of the way. I want to pull this one down from the middle. You can see some of the lower leaves are burnt. But when you look at the bud, you can also see how close each node is to each other. And then as the bud gets toward the top, it becomes one big node, one, two, three, four nodes. You can see down here, these flowers aren't as big or as dense as this and they get smaller, including these from the lower branches down there. And this is why I always tell you guys you should strip off the lower branches and concentrate on the bigger ones. You got a whole bunch of these lower ones, and in this garden it's appropriate because of how full it is, but you can see that the flowers just keep getting smaller. But the, this is what you're shooting for, is this is the part of the canopy that you're shooting for. Look at how nice and big those buds are. Let's pull one more out from here in the middle. There we go. You can see that these buds actually look like they're bigger than these buds, and I think that's because this is too close to the middle of the light and there's too much light. And if you look at the leaf on this plant, you'll see that that's definitely too much light and too much nutrients. You can sort of start to see it blanch out, and this flower over here kind of supports it with the burning. You can see that this leaf here, however, looks pretty good. This leaf here looks pretty good. Well, not as bad. You know, there's always so much more in a garden besides just the plants to give you a clue on what's going on. You know, we got fun stuff like ducting hanging from bungees. We've got a thermostat over here taped to the wall. And then here's something that you might not have seen, some blue painters tape on the tent it's got feed schedules, when and how often and how much. And then there's this trick that I like. I always like to check people's trash cans because you can really see what's going on. Oh, a Dr. Doom cap and one of the instruction charts. Oh, and a tissue, don't worry about that. But somewhere around here is a Dr. Doom. Let's see if we can find it, come on in. Okay, every garden has it. Your garden, my garden, Every garden has a shelf of shame, and what is it? That's that shit that you've collected over time. From when you first started growing and you thought you needed everything, to now when you only use a couple of bottles, right? So let's see what Old Navy has in his garden. Let's start up top. Oh, we got a Hanna meter. Nice continuous meter, a Hanna box. Some Hanna solution, some uh, calibration solution. Two two-foot old T5 bulbs, 600 watt Hortolux, that's what we saw in the tent. A Hanna replacement probe. Alright, next we've got a Sunmaster 600 watt HPS, PlantMax 600 watt halide conversion, Hortolux 600 watt, PlantMax 600, 1000 watt. So there's 1000 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 600. So after several runs, you can tell he used to have a thousand and now he's running 600s, two 600s in the tent, six bulbs. So he's probably had, you know, like two crops or three crops from each pair. So like three crops, six crops, nine crops from these bulbs, plus the, th the two he has in the tent right now. All right, final phase, cleaning solution from <clears throat> advanced nutrients, pH down, Mad Farmer get up. This is pH up from Mad Farmer. They got a couple other good products too. They got testing solution, pH buffer, standard reference seven. 
Dr. Doom, Total Release Nebulizer Fogger, Azimax, Omri Certified, SNS 217. This is for spider mites. They also make the 203 for everything else and the 209. Clear X. He's got those seven gallon buckets of media. Clear X. The one ounce up solutions. A bunch of pens and stuff that he probably uses to write on the blue tape on the tent. Some little squeegee things. Some tape. All right, let's uh, take a shelf up here. We got an insecticide bottle. Ah, you can always find this stuff, right? This is the stuff from Home Depot. Like when you first get going, you end up buying like Serenade and Home Depot stuff. <laughs> but then you just end up with like the Dr. Doom and the SNS cup. Elemental Sulfur. These are the pistols that you put in. These are the sulfur pistols that you put in the sulfur burners. It's when you heat them up, it changes to a liquid and evaporates into the room and the sulfur gets on the walls and stains it. So at some point there was either a preventative mold and mildew or he was trying to get rid of it. Silica from Bloom Nutrients, the heaviest bottle in my store that we sell. Clonex solution, um, vitamin B1 and thiamine and a very low nutrient charge. Best thing you could give your plants. Ah, twin Clonex gels from Hydrodynamics. Perfect, every garden needs a Clonex gel. One of those emergency flashlights, isopropyl alcohol, red solo cups for cuttings, get rooters started. Some Velcro to hold up the fan and filter in the tents. All right, sweet products. Almost empty bottle of sweet, sweet by Botanic here. Two bottles black. Yeah, some A and B. GH three part, right? GH awesome stuff. Kelmag, Overdrive, a 154 PK. Look at that, a 154 and a 054. How similar is that? Same two products. Check it out, Kelmag. Let's see, ah, there we go, Fox Farm. This must be old, it's way down at the bottom with an old sticker on it. This is probably one of the original nutrients that he used. Yep, and last thing is a couple of five gallon buckets that he's mixing of water. Let's see what he's got. I know he said he had a hand meter, but I didn't see it. So this is a PPM meter. Put it in, shake it off to make sure there's nothing on it. Let's see what it says. 21 PPM. Yeah. So you know that's RO water. 20 PPM. Now remember, letting your water sit might let some of the chlorine evaporate, but it doesn't change your PPM. Well, actually, it might even go up because if the water evaporates, the salt that's left behind builds up. See this, uh, see this tarp here? It's covering a window. I'm gonna tell you something super important when covering windows. Always cover it twice. Cover the window neatly with a section of plastic. Thumb tack it all the way around, and then put an entire second piece up over it because I assure you at some point, if you just do one plastic covering, it's going to come down. So this is the veg area. It's a three by three tent. You saw the flowers are four by four tents. If you do them every other month, so you get a harvest every 30 days, then this tent can support that level. Since they are 600 watt dimmables, look down here. Since they are 600 watt dimmables in the flower tent, this, 200 watt, two foot, eight bulb T5 is enough to get a start in veg. So all these plants will go over into the tent, um, into one of the four by four tents, and then they'll be vegged out for a couple weeks in there just to puff them up. And then the flowering process starts. Hopefully next time the flowering process will start two weeks sooner. All right, there's only so much I can show you here in this garden because of the lighting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plant a couple of these leaves, don't cry. Not that one, too high. This one though, for sure. A couple of these leaves and a couple from this plant too. Cause there's lots of stuff that I wanna show you about this. So come on, let's go. All right, so take a look at right here. See this purple stripe? See how it's green? Take a look at this next one. See how it's purple here? Green on the bottom. Got purple on top. If we keep looking down the plant. Oh, here we go. You can see how it's green on the bottom here, but purple on top. Look at how dark green that leaf is. 
That's because this plant doesn't have enough mat. That's why I tell you the number one problem in a healthy garden is not enough mat. These, this plant, it looks pretty good, but it should not be dark green like this, nor should it be purple, nor should it have stripes. Because the next thing that'll start to happen is the inner vanal spaces will get yellow and you'll get tips and stripes. You can already see that the leaves close to the light have purple down the vein of the leaf. On the back side, it's still green. You can see the purple starting. You can see the purple here at the petiole. This is not enough mat. Okay, these are the leaves from tent number one. And you can see already, inside right in here, you can see how shiny it is from the thrip damage when the light catches it. That's probably what we saw the bomb for in there. You can see right here, that's starting of the inner vanal yellowing, and that's not enough mag. Of course, that's supported when we look back here at the petiole, and we can see it's purple on top, green on the bottom. The leaf edges aren't cupped. They're not burnt, but you can definitely see the shiny from the, from the thrips. Here it is again on this leaf, and what the thrip does is it eats the surface of the leaf, so it reflects the light in a dull gray color instead of bright green like the leaf. You can see here it's starting to lighten um, in color. That's kind of the advanced stages of not enough mag, but remember the plant is dying. You can see that the edges of the leaf have curled and they've gone necrotic on this leaf. And when we turn it over, it's still green on the bottom. All right, one more leaf. You can see the thrip damage, the edges curled, purple on top. You can see the line purple go from purple okay, to Okay, let's green. start with this leaf. And these three leaves are from tent two. You can see how dark green the leaf is, but the petiole is green. The intervenal spaces, you can see it there with the light reflecting, it's light green. When we turn it over, it's all light green, a little bit of purple right there. Now this leaf here is something different, right? This is one of the big fan leaves that were close to the light. This could be light burn, and this could also be because the plant's in week seven. That's necrotic tissue. When you look at the rest of the tips, you can see that it's not too many nutrients or all the tip leaves would be like that. You can see that the leaves are curled, that the edges are ruffled up. That's the that's mag shortage. But then when you look right here in the intervenal space, you can see it's purple. The petiole is purple. And when I turn it over, it's green. So you can see that we were just starting to run short on mag because the part, the part facing the light was purple, but the underside was still green. So this was not in an advanced stage. Um, you can see the inner venal spots. You could almost think that was spider mites, except spider mites are one little yellow dot. It doesn't look like this. But the plant's in week seven flower, so we should expect it. <coughs> Here on this leaf, we see the purple again, green at the base, green up the inner, the center vein, the inner venal space. The bottom is green. You can start to see the purple. And when I look at it this way, you can see the transition from the bottom to the purple on top. And that's because that's where all the light was. Next thing to look at, when we look at the surface of this leaf, you can see it kind of has little shiny spots. I'm trying to catch it for the camera. You can see it has little shiny spots. That's thrip damage, and that would explain why we saw the bomb in the trash can. There, that's pretty good on the shiny spots. That's okay, so before damage. I tell you what I think, you know, what we should do with the garden and what would improve it, um, I wanted to show you some of the buds that have been grown, and a good place to start is, look at that jar. There's been a lot of buds in this jar for a lot of years. Let's take a look at the buds. Yeah, circle it all. Okay. There you go. You gotta admit, that's a pretty nice bud. And when we compare it to the plant, you can see it has the one node, two nodes, three. These are each of the nodes that would have come off the plant, four, five, and a top. So this is like a five or six node plant right in there, right? And you get that by keeping the plant top even in a nice scrog shape so all your buds kind of look like this, like we saw in the garden, although maybe not quite as close to the light. Let's 
smells fresh. Okay, so I do garden rescue for a reason. Because you step into a garden like this and it could be so much more, right? So we start with a 200 watt veg. A 200 watt veg should only be a 400 watt flower because plants double during flower. But there's two 600 watt tents here and even though they're dimmable, 200 watts in veg is not enough for 1200 watts in flower. So what would I do in this situation? Well, at the moment, either I would harvest everything in both of these tents, move these plants into here under 400 watts and start vegging them. Or I would take these two plants, stuff them into that trellis and, uh, and put these ones here and veg in that tent and let them go from there and let these finish because they do look like they're two weeks away from finishing. And then I would veg these ones up in the flower tent a little longer. When all of these came down, I would split those plants up between both tents, turn both lights to 400. I would veg them into their first trellis when they were down here so you didn't end up with the plants so close to the light eight weeks later. And with that, you could see you wouldn't get a harvest every 60 days because you would still be vegging for a couple of weeks in these two tents. But that's the trick. You have to use the equipment you have. Not everybody's going to get a harvest every 60 days. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any other questions, you can always pick up my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide. We've got the marijuana version now. You can get it on eBay, Amazon, or my website, thegrowboss.com, and get yourself some of those No More, Grow More fat cards, because I already know everywhere you're going to fail. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something super important because this is why almost everybody that comes through my store fails. Ready? You guys are all concerned about too many things. You're concerned about the perfect temperature, the perfect humidity, right? The perfect pH, the perfect ppm. But none of that matters because here's why. Even if you were to get all of those things right, as if, you look at something like this where the canopy is too close to the light and you can see this is far more of a mistake than using a not the perfect amount of nutrients. If this canopy was done two feet lower, maybe five or six plants instead of four, that would have been far more effective than anything you would have accomplished by buying any specific nutrient, any specific harvesting schedule, any specific, any ritual, recipe, anything your friend has. This is a far bigger waste than anything else because you did a good job and you just fucked it up at the end by letting it get too close to the light. So you can come in and ask me what the perfect schedule is, what the perfect watering is, what any of it is. But if you do this, it's a far bigger penalty.